Whoa, hey guys, it's Michael here. Got some crazy ass glasses on because I was running my plasma torch. Anyways, I dreamt up this other day. I uh, have an old plasma torch, just El Cheapo, and I want to make more cuts with it. And I don't really like shaky cuts. Yeah, you can run a straight edge and things like that. I've seen a few people online build track torches. Mainly, you put it on a piece of steel and it just cuts all the way through. This is kind of a track torch slash chop saw in a way. It makes 90 degree cuts like most things would, and you can tilt the head and do bevel cuts, but you can also go from 90 anywhere to 45 simply like that and it works extremely well. I just transformed a tiny cheapo $250 plasma torch into a beautifully cutting machine. I've got limit switches, variable speed, and I'll show you guys how I built the whole thing for extremely cheap. So if you're interested, stick around, check out the video guys. So this is an uh, inch and a quarter OD. This is one inch and they're both eighth inch wall. There's a little weld seam down here. Once I die grind this out, this will be the slider for this plasma track. So sometimes when you're cutting metal, you need uh, your long extended piece of metal to be supported. Some people have fancy stands. I like to use tiny kid bikes. They work pretty well. They're usually always around here. So that's a little weld seam we're going to die grind out of here. Thirty-one inches. Alright you guys, did a little more die grinding than I thought I'd need to. Usually you can get away with just grinding the weld off and you're good to go, but I had to grind two sides of this down a little bit with a die grinder. And if you do start fitting these things, mark them with a sharpie so you know which side, because this is the side I fit it to. And then you see it slides nice, but if you turn them sometimes, sometimes they hang up. So make a point when you die grind them to fit them to a match size. I have to slot this piece here, cut the top off of it. The bandsaw I wasn't really doing, it was a pain in the butt, so I'm just going to use the plasma torch and cut it off. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video so far. If you do, please hit like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And uh, then you'll get notifications of all other different projects I'm working on in the near future here. So that part we just plasma cut off of there is uh, actually going to be a little spot to put the torch in. And I'm going to drill and tap this so I can put some little twist locks on here. This is going to actually hold the torch on the rail. And I'll probably put a bolt on the bottom too to pivot it up and down a little bit for adjustments. Well, isn't that the shits? Went to go use my drill and realized the chuck's all screwed up. Look at that. Have you guys seen that before? That's not very good. Yeah, wobbly it makes a bit. Yeah. That's going to be nice. Guess I'll go to this old ass drill press I have. If you guys are interested in this project, make a point to go to my YouTube page. I got a lot more videos from building a bandsaw mill from scratch to taking an old broken down quad and making it into a quad truck. Later on I'll make these tool lists with some wing nuts on here, but this is just to kind of rough it out. And got this bolt down here to adjust the torch up and down here. Alright, so what I'm going to work on now is I'm going to make a little tap that comes out here. It's the stick out. And then I'm going to use another piece of this 1 inch OD. And this is a 3 quarter inch um, OD, but it's thin wall. I wish it was thick wall, but that's all I got. Beautiful. Brand new. Right off the metal truck. Here's what we got so far. We got the slider bar and this is a little nub that sticks out off of it that I drilled a quarter inch hole in. And this part we're going to take over the milling machine. We're going to slot the whole back off of it and then we're going to cut two uh, quarter inch slots in it. And it's going to go on here for height adjustment and for 45s and bevels, things like that. So we'll go to the milling machine next year. It is. We'll go clean it up. So here's the finished part. It's going to be tool free so you can move it up and down. This is going to set the height of the torch for different pieces of metal. It's going to be able to go up and down. You're also going to be able to kick it out of 45 for cutting bevels. I might put a little Allen set screw down here and one up here maybe to just set the 45 degree angle and to set it 90 with this piece here. Yeah this is going to sit on the slider. The torch is going to get welded to this. So when I was at the hardware store picking out all thread and the nuts and things for all this project here, I got one of these coupler nuts thinking I was going to weld it on here, but it has too much spinning resistance on the all thread, so I'm going to opt for uh, two separate smaller ones on here. I think it'll be better.
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark some spots on here and drill them and tap them and actually probably weld some nuts on here as well. There are going to be a little adjustments on here so you can shim out the hinge a little bit and it's going to adjust the arm up and down to keep it level across the table. For any of you that are really concerned about this welding some zinc plate and some galvanized stuff here, rest assured I got a super loud fan above me. That's why I'm yelling so loud. So when I was picking out hinges at this local weld shop, they had a few that aren't coated with anything, so it's not bad to weld on. But uh, one thing I did not like is all the hinges there had a bit of slop in them. So what I'm going to go through is take a punch and try to pin them a little tighter here. That tightened it up quite a bit. Now there's no slop in there, or a lot less I should say. It's stiffer now too, which is fine. So we're back onto this component here. I cut this other little scrap of uh, angle. We're going to box it in here. Because without boxing it in, I'd be welding it something like this, and I don't want that. So I think just running it with a cordless drill is perfectly fine. I think most people would stop with that. So I think any cheapo drill should work fine for the motor drive, but I'm gonna actually take the chuck off this first and transfer it to my other drill because of course it was all jacked up. Basic drill motor and a pulse width controller. Very simple. This is about the fundamentals of all we really need to control this thing. Inside this box I wear a pulse width controller. It's going to have a digital display so when you vary the speed you'll kind of know what optimum speed you want to cut at. Pretty much all these options you get with the drill but I could take it one step further and put a return to home button. And I can also put a limit switch so if I want to cut like say a 4 inch cut it will go 4 inches and stop. So here's a legitimate first bench test on this thing. So I'm going to point out a few cool features about this thing as well. It has a little tiny fence back here. It's about an eighth inch taller than the grating and you can remove the grating if you want to clean out the table. And if you have a nice straight edge on your, your plate you want to cut, you can just slide it right up to there. And if the torch is in the 90 degree position, it has little stops. I'll show some close ups. It will always cut a 90 degree. If you want to cut a 45, you bring it over, stops and you got a 45 degree. And if you really don't like it as a cutting torch, you can always use it as an awesome barbecue. Looks like it worked pretty well for that. If you own a manual plasma torch like this, I highly recommend building a track torch. It's nice to have clean cuts like a CNC with controlled speed, but on a manual torch for simplicity. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe. Take care guys, bye. Well, under the tarp here, I got a new tool. Let me uh, pull off the tarp and show you guys what I got here.